so many sad because of us how to do it first yeah. yeah please okay i think we start uh, good afternoon, people from Mauritius, Mariki, Nazira, Ian. I think it's the three of you at the moment. Um, my name is Mariki Tronwepener. I am part of the faculty here at the University of Stellenbosch Business School. I teach on the MBA and on the PGD BMA, which are two of the programs that, that we will be discussing. And with me is Doris Fulyun. Doris, can you introduce yourself, please? I can. My name is Doris Fulyun. Um, I'm the senior futurist at the Institute for Futures Research here, but I also teach on the infall in future studies. And I recently graduated through, uh, through the whole program, so I think that's also why they want me to, say, to share a little bit of the student experience. Of course, yes, we would, we would love to, to know about that. Um, Ian, if we could just get an indication before we start in which program you're interested so that we can give attention to that uh, specifically, that would help us. In the meantime, I will just, for those of you who don't know our business school that well and haven't been to Cape Town, there you can see a picture of our campus with our famous mountain in the background so that you can see where we are sitting at the moment. Um, our business school, first of all, um, I think you know that we are internationally accredited. We have three international accreditations, um, all three that are in existence. There are no more than three. So it's AACSB, Equus and Amber, and then we're also well known for our leadership development across all our programs. And I think something that we're also well known for is our client engagement at our business school. You're not just a number, we know who you are. That's one of the reasons why we keep our classes rather um, low numbers, um, not, not that big classes, so we, we can uh, engage with clients. Then we have a global perspective as well as an African uh, context in all our programs. Thank you, Ian. I see that you are interested in doing the MBA blended, so we will give attention to that specifically. Our reputation, as I've said, we were the first African business school to be accredited by all three international accreditations. And currently in the world, we are one of only 89 business schools who have the triple crown, as we call it, the three international accreditations, from 16,000 business schools globally. And we also top ranked, first in South Africa on PMR, that's the Professional Management Review, that is the oldest ranking in South Africa for business schools. And then also first in South Africa on Ed Universal, that's a global ranking, they do ranking of schools in all the continents uh, across the world. And then our university is also well known and the top research university at the moment in Africa. As I've said, we're well known for leadership development. We claim that we develop leaders and go beyond training managers. So responsible leadership is what we're aiming for uh, and that we include also African cases um, in all our leadership development. I see there's another person. Uh, no. Uh, all right, that, that picture shows all our programs that we, uh, we are currently offering. You will see in the red stream, the first stream, is about management, business management. There we have the PhD, the masters, and the PG dip. And Ian, you're there in the middle thinking of MBA. Then we have the green stream with uh, development finance, the same levels, PG dip, masters, and PhD. And then we have Doris's programs, also the same starting with PGD, then with M, and then with PhD. Then we have a Master's in Coaching, the light blue, 
And then the purple, we have a project management PG dip, very popular. You can also go with the PG dip in project management into the MBA. In the yellow line, we have a PG dip in leadership. And then we also have a PG dip in financial planning. I can just mention at this stage, ladies and gentlemen, that the PG dip is a South African term, which is equal to the honours degree. It just means that it is a general type of program. We are not going, for example, in depth in in marketing or in in any other subject, but it is more a general program. That is why it's called a PG um, dip or a postgraduate diploma. So let's see the MBA. Let's highlight that first. Uh, Ian is interested in, in the MBA. First of all, the entrance requirements. We need a four-year uh, bachelor's degree or a three-year bachelor's plus an honours degree or a three-year bachelor's plus the PG dip. So one of those three um, are required for you to enter the MBA. Work experience, we require three years, preferably on manage, a management level because that is the profile of our current MBA students. When you apply, we also require three essays that you will see on our website, mainly showing your motivation, why you want to do the program. Then the selection test, you can do either do the SHL online or the GMAT. I think the GMAT is more well known, but uh, most of our applicants um, do the SHL test because you can do it from where you are. It tests the current competency of, of candidates. We also need a comprehensive CV. The reason for this is that we need to see uh, what you can bring to the table, for instance, in, in NBA, where we need your competence in a certain group, and we will definitely then uh, see where we need to put you in which um, uh, syndicate group we can, we can put you. So we need a, a wide variety of um, experience. So that's why we need the, the CV. Let's, let's talk about the program options at this stage. And Ian, you can ask your questions in between if you want, or we can deal with the questions afterwards. First of all, we have a full-time, one-year program, nine months of classes, you're on campus, and you have uh, your block week with the other students in November. Second one is modular. Uh, we have at the moment not three groups, but two groups, um, study blocks of six days each, and then the elective uh, with that, and the international study module as well. I will talk about that a little bit later. And then we have the program that Ian is interested in, um, also over two years, from January 2019 to August 2020, where you'll be in classes, or you do classes wherever you are in Mauritius. You join the blended group. One evening a week, you need to be in class. And in class, we mean it's not like an online or a distance program where you can do it in your own time. You need to be logged in and be part of the class, whether you are physically sitting in our classroom here on campus, or where you, whether you're sitting at home or at work in Mauritius. You need to be in real time in the class. And this presentation gives a little bit of a feel of what it would feel like. Exactly. Because the screen does. that he's seeing now is more or less the screen that he's going to see. That when is exactly class. the screen that the students will see in class, where they ask their questions at the same spot there in the chat, yeah. in the chat room. We can see exactly who's logged on. As you know, you, you also teach on, on the blended uh, mode, so that is exactly uh, how we do it. So here we see 
a blended classroom with the students that, that are in class. And at the back, you see in the picture, we see this screen that, we, that you are also seeing now, where we can see the chats coming up from students in the external class. Yeah. And there we can see a student from um, the SUTU who's been in the SUTU, just joined the interactive lecture uh, presentation. Um, more than a thousand kilometers from campus. So <laughs> the same will happen with you, Ian. So anywhere uh, where you have connectivity. Our MBA curriculum, there you can see all the modules, all the subjects. Um, and the red ones are the things that we'd like to, to speak about. First is the International Study Module, which is a full module where we take all our MBA students abroad to one of our business school partner schools, where we'll, we will get lectures and we do company visits and so on. I will say a little bit more. And then we have a subject called Perspectives on African future, uh, Frontiers. And you know, Doris, that this, this module is really very interesting. I've seen panel discussions there. Mm -hmm. We see new content, also from the content that you generate in the Futures Institute. And yeah. um, that's very interesting for our students as well. So you can see that the expertise that we have in our research uh, centers or research institutes are also plugged in and embedded in our MBA curriculum. Then we have our research component, which is part and parcel of all master's degrees. So you see that as a module, um, counting uh, the most credits, 45 out of the, all the credits on the, on the MBA. And then you will see the four modules at the bottom. They are a little bit uh, dark green, I think it is. Those four modules overlap with the PG Dip BMA. So the students who's doing the PG Dip BMA don't have to redo <coughs> these four modules on the MBA program. But if you're coming in directly onto the MBA, you'll have to do these four as part of your MBA. Our responsible leadership development is what we became famous for, I would say. And we look at this from different dimensions. Uh, personal dimension, me, I as an authentic leader, we develop, we try to develop you as a personal leader on a personal level. Then interpersonal is also the workplace where we develop group team leadership, the, uh, leadership in the organization, and then also societal leadership. Here you can see what we cover in the content, and we use different methods. It's individual sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions with students, reflective essays, where students need to reflect on how they've learned, um, and what the impact was on the, on the work and personal lives, assignments, and then also a study tour. The study tour, the international tour, students need to write a reflective essay on that as well. So there we have the international study module. Um, we go to about 10 destinations every year and students can choose. It's, it's a six, a seven, eight days trip. This year, Doris, I will be taking a group of about 18 students, I think, to St. Petersburg in Russia. That's going to be exciting. Yes, we're very excited and we are leaving next week, Friday. Oh, goodness. Yes, and we will have a, a blend of, you know, the old cultural Russian government um, visits as well as company visits. So students are looking forward to that. So the theme of this one is doing business in BRICS countries and with a focus on Russia. And how does that work? So the student at the beginning decide, 
I want to go to the America one or the Russia yes. one. Yes, at some point Africa during one. the program, you we let options. students, we give them options. Oh. And they need to choose number one, two, and three. And then they uh, get, assigned. get assigned. And it happens at different times of the year, if I remember Yes, correctly. we start with it in June of the second year. So in the blended group, Ian, um, the first uh, international module would be in June. And, and I'm later now with my module that I will be taking overseas in going into um, uh, September. And I think the latest one is in October. But that's also nice because then you can fit it in with your organizational responsibilities exactly. so that your international module don't go over year end Absolutely. or something like that. Absolutely. And you can also see which yeah. one will fit better in your class program and work program. There's just an email to say how much uh, from a student from Elizabeth Arden, how much uh, she has enjoyed this and how it has added value and, and so on. She's been to Slovenia with a group previously. Then we have elective courses towards the end of the program. You need to select two electives. And they're in all different streams, strategy or marketing or leadership, finance, technology, futures, coaching, project management. So if you're interested in futures, uh, but you're doing on the MBA, then you could um, select the futures elective. Then we have two new MBA streams. I'm just mentioning it very briefly. Apart from the general stream in MBA, we have now two specialist streams. The one is in management of international organizations. We're doing this in uh, cooperation with the United Nations. And then we have a healthcare leadership program. Doctors, dentists, managers of hospitals, all of those people, they in the second year would go into a separate stream. So I'm not going into that in detail. So let's look at the summary of requirements. All students will need a laptop and internet access. And then on modular, students need to attend all the blocks here on campus. And off campus, they need to spend between 12 and 18 hours per week over the two years of study. That is typical. We've researched that. We know that by now, that that is what you will need. And then for you, Ian, you will need to attend three blocks. One in the beginning of your program, in the middle, and towards the end, when you do electives with the rest of the students. You will also need between 15 and 20 hours of study per week over two years. And then you will need your internet connectivity, which is it, obvious. Full time, I'm not going to do that. There's students on campus. And uh, you are all in class for about 408 class hours. But the 12 to 18 will be extra. And that is all from my side at the moment. I'm going to. Uh, allow some questions maybe from Ian before we hand over to Doris to say something about the futures option. Um, are there any questions, Ian? Ian is typing us a question. Okay. Three topics on the essay, Mari. Mari, our uh, Brand Manager for MBA is with us in the room. And Mari, if you can just come to us here. Can you to, hear me? Ian, yeah, can you, want you to hear take us? My seat? No, no, it's fine, it's fine. I put a few talk from here. The actual topics for the essays do appear on our website or in the brochure. So we would recommend you download the comprehensive brochure. But if I can just briefly say, we're looking at your motivation and uh, your level of motivation why you want to do the MBA. So basically you would be telling us where do you see yourself 10 years from now? What are your aspirations? Um, you will be touching on things like how do you deal with stress? 
So in a nutshell, you will be, apart from the fact that you have, will be presenting your CV and academic records, we also want to establish in a narrative what are, what are the reasons that are driving you to want to do this program. So in essence, you will be selling yourself. So do take time with the essays, don't rush through them. You can do the online application, you can go back on the, maybe two or three or four days later, upload the essays, and, um, so, and about 250 words, I'd say, per topic. So that is yeah. basically what, what the essay will entail. Thank you very much, Mari. I hope you've heard that, Ian. So that is very important. Those essays will give us an indication of where you where you're heading. So don't give us bullet points. We need a nice narrative of uh, what you would like to do with your career going forward. I hope that answers the question. And anything else, Ian? I'm sure there are questions that you would like to to ask us. Yeah, why you think? Um, maybe I could ask Mariki if there's something comes up in your mind, Mariki, regarding uh, the MBA or the blended mode, uh, which would be the mode that the students from Mauritius, we, we have a student from Mauritius at the moment, his name is Cedric, I've had him in my class, um, very good student and he's enjoying, I hope he's enjoy, still enjoying his, his, his MBA, but we met him in person there in Mauritius and uh, we were very glad that he enrolled on our program. Marike is typing us something, but also Nazira, something from your side, we would really appreciate because you know the market there. Um, what would be the typical questions uh, at this point? Ian, so, um, uh, while Marike is, I see she's typing, Ian, you will be in class every week for a, a rather long slot from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock. So 4 o'clock, you may, you may um, choose to start at work and stay at your workplace till 8 o'clock. Remember, it's 4 o'clock our time, so yeah, it's a little bit later oh, time. So it's so 6 o'clock till 10 o'clock. Oh, goodness. Then I'm you sorry, no, uh, Ian. Um, <laughs> I've just been confused here. It's from 6 o'clock the evening to 10 o'clock. So that would be your hours. If it's good, our postmates are good. Did you cover the number of modules? Yes. Yeah, that you cover the number of modules they have to attend on campus. Well, in the blended, blended, you need to attend all of the classes in real time online. So, no, it's, so it is they don't online. have to come here on the blended one. They do. Three so modules, I did cover that. You need to be here um, attending three blocks. There yeah, it's on the yeah. screen. In the, right in the beginning for two weeks, Students attend on the blended MBA. Then in the middle, next year, in the second year in the beginning, and then right at the end in 2020, when they do their electives, that's a nice part of the program, because there you customize your own MBA in terms of elective courses. I just looked through the electives and I thought, I want to do all of them. <laughs> it's yes. It's really cool. Yes. So, Mariki, it's the three study blocks in total for the blended students, as opposed to nine blocks for the modular. So, modular attend all the um, uh, cl classes, the sessions on campus. I'm just waiting for Nazira, and then I can we can hand to. Do you think to we Nazira's. should, Mariki? Please guide us here. Um, Ian is interested in the MBA, yes. um, and what I have to share is about the future studies degree. Would you want us to do that at all? Um, do you think anybody would be interested so that we could use the recording later to share it with those people at all? I think or we should, should we just stop? I think we could do a short one, definitely. Uh -huh. um, also for the for Mariki and Nazira who could get For their more. benefit, because yes. if you get questions and stuff. 
Mary Kay is typing. She's going to so, say yes. I she's going to say yeah, yes. I think she's going to say yes. Okay. <laughs> if that so I'm is gonna so, put my slides on. I'm going to switch to your slides. Lovely. Um, uh, okay, Marika, but I answered on your behalf. I guessed what you would answer. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share a little bit about the postgrad diploma and future studies. Because if you want to do future studies, it doesn't matter what degree you have before. So even if you have a doctorate in another field, you're still going to start with the postgrad diploma. That's one of the first questions we usually get. Uh, me personally, I had three other honors degrees and then still had to, to start in the postgrad diploma. So you need to do the, the postgrad diploma, because whether you have three uh, honors degrees or not. Three honors degrees, no matter what That's else you have. That's an important point. It's an important point. The reason being, future studies is such a unique qualification that you probably have nothing, even me coming from strategy. I and having So in the beginning, I was a little bit resistant about that because I thought, hey, hello, I've done that level another, a few times. <laughs> Do I really have, want to have another degree on that level? After the course, I, there's no other way. That, that is really, and it gives you the broad base in the beginning. So there's no other entry into our masters than through the PGD. So the PGD is the entrance. Um, what we require is very similar to the MBA. We want at least a three-year degree um, as a basics, but then significant senior level experience of thinking about longer term implications and that. So, and for that reason, our students are mostly not 20 years old. Um, they have a little bit of experience. They've been busy with doing stuff. That is similar to the MBA. We see that we have on average 12, even for 15, 14 years of experience. Yeah. Um, so it is quite a mature class as well. Yeah. Just the, like the same. Yeah. yeah. And our students come from every kind of industry. They come from government. They come from, from NGOs, social sector organizations. They come from business which makes for very interesting discussions in class. All right, so um, a little bit about what it is. We believe that there's always a range of plausible futures that is there to be, to be discovered, not just one predetermined future. And the basics for the course as well is we think that people actually have an influence about what every future comes about. And that is the basics of the whole course. Um, studying, thinking about what kind of resources do we assign, what kind of processes we create, what kind of decisions we make to shape the future going forward. So um, what we try to do is spot those dots on the horizon. When we look at them long enough, we start identifying how they act together. Oh, and yes. those are the things we call trends. And once we spot the trends, that's when the interesting bit comes because then we ask, oh, okay, so but why is that happening? So what is the people of the earth doing to make that trend to happen? And then we start identifying and really going deeper, 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 because just looking at what happens, there's now three more of this or five less of that, yeah. says a little bit of something, but it, it doesn't make us really understand why those things are happening. Yes. So, we look at the social causes, the kind of world views that people carry in their minds, and very especially And, and they are changing. They're changing. Yes, they're and shifting. if we understand the shifts, then we can sort of starting to, to foresee what is going to cook up on the more of this, less of that level. So that's, some, that's one of the tools there in the corner we call the causal layered analysis, where we really try to go deeper, deeper down to understand what is going on. So our postgraduate diploma is one year, 120 credits. We cover six um, modules of equal weighting. Um, we start off with applied philosophy. Now for me, coming from the hard numbers field, applied philosophy was very great in the beginning. <laughs> But the doors cannot start anywhere else. We need to understand thinking and and logic, logic. and reasoning yes. and yes. all the rest. So um, in the beginning, when I started that module, I thought, Whoa, what am I getting into? This 
business is too grey for me. Um, but it, it taught me so much. And then after that, we do the principles of future studies as a field of inquiry and a lot of tools and techniques go in there. And then we start now, our students are equipped with a few spanners in their toolbox. Now they can start looking out the window. So then we try to um, understand what's going on out there. We look at political stuff and social stuff and of economic course. stuff and everything. And then after that, we usually realize, you know what, we need a little bit more. So then we do systems thinking to understand the connections and the causes and effects between things. So that's the next module. And then we realize, you know what, if everything is changing, we better start understanding how to manage change and how, what to do there. So that is a nice one. And then the last one we finish off with doing a, a lot of measuring statistical analysis a little bit. Um, and so qualitative and quantitative kind of measurements and doing research. And then based on that, what do we do with the information? How do we actually make the future? Can one, can one actually make your own future, guys? Yes, by the decisions we make. We do that every day. Okay. By the decisions That's we make, the resources we assign, the processes we create, we are actually making our future. Okay, it doesn't come to us, we make it. We make it. That's an important <laughs> thing to understand. And this is how we access the airfoil through the PGD. Okay. Study. So, if there's any questions, um, Mariki, Nasira, Ian, if you have questions, I, I can't it's convince you not to do the MBA because you're already there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any this questions, Mariki? Okay. Are we done at that? I, I think I, I will also not do our PG dip. It is similar to yours. It, it, it is just for people who uh, who don't meet the entry requirements oh, for MBA. MBA. Uh, like I've said, uh, a bachelor plus one year, uh, then you do need to do the PGD as or well. Or maybe they're in some profession and they just want to have a little bit of business management, but exactly. they don't want to do three years of yes, MBA. Yes, we've seen that because mm -hmm. our PG dip in business management is entrepreneurial folk have an entrepreneurial focus. So people having their own small business or yeah, maybe a yeah. doctor with his or her uh, own practice, practice yeah. they come often to the PG the BMA mm -hmm. to learn about business management. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, it's got a, a focus on entrepreneurship which is uh, quite unique. Um, while the MBA has a strategy focus, yeah. the, the, the PG dips got more of an entrepreneurial, well, entrepreneurial focus. Yes. Ricky, I don't quite, you, uh, you mean come. you can't come from another field? Mm -hmm. What is that for? Mm -hmm. Is that for future studies? studies? No. Look at the question above. PhD, what about a PhD in future yes. studies? So you need to do PG dip, then M, yes. and only then a PhD. Um, Mariki, I think on the PhD in future studies, I know that the university has allowed um, for PhD because a PhD, Mariki may be um, in uncharted waters here, but I know that there was one exception for a PhD in future studies because the candidate had a very broad um, and he wanted to use future studies mm -hmm. tools and techniques so that the PhD thing was then stronger weighted towards future studies as a field. You're right. Yeah. The, the university will allow if you've got the experience mm -hmm. uh, and background in, say, and something a similar. Masters in something else. Yes. Yeah. But the PG dip and masters will go together. Yeah. You can't split those. You need to have a PG dip to go to masters. Yeah. Uh, um, in your field. In my field. Yeah. I'm going to do the PhD now, but that's the natural progression. I did the PGD exactly. and the full and now the PhD. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. I hope that answers um, I hope Mariki's it answers question. Mariki, but that question, Dr. Um, Professor Andre Rue, he's the he's the one. So 
Um, yes. Is it, the one that would be able to really answer that question about the PhD in future studies? Yeah, but I also know that they do make exceptions in on PhD level. Yeah. Uh, allowing yeah. people in and haven't come through the screening. Yeah. Yeah. In in certain cases. Do I have to be have a very good um, research proposal? Yes. Yes. And prove that you you are actually going to use the tools and inquiry methods of the field. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Are we done? Are we wrapping it up? Anything from Ian, maybe Nazira, Mariki, something bothering you or concerns? Uh, otherwise, we will be concluding. Second for Yes, we wait a second for Mariki. She's typing, and then we will conclude. The target group of future studies are people that are in positions where they have to make decisions of, or provide insights about the longer term future of anything. Um, so what we get is really a wide diversity of people from government organizations, from NGOs, from business, especially the strategy and leadership yes. type of people, but also we, we have quite a few consultants, business consultants um, that, are, that are doing this course because it would improve their consulting practice. Um, I know in this year's course there are quite a few. I did it because I wanted to improve my consulting. I come from business consulting, so I, that was the main reason why I did it. Um, so, yes, Future Studies is extremely unique. We are the only, on the African continent, we are the only university that are offering that as a program. And across the world, I think there's about 13 places in the world where you can actually do a qualification. So future studies is definitely unique. Okay. Good. Have we answered your questions, Mariki? Ian is typing. Let's listen to Ian. Thanks, Ian. It was good to have you, and we hope that we're welcoming you here next year. Definitely, and I will ask my colleague, Mari Willow, she's sitting here next to us, to be in touch with you so that we can make sure that you have everything you need. Uh, finance, development finance, okay, um, Ricky, I have actually, uh, I have slides on that. Do you want me to quickly cover that? Ooh. There's the BMI, I'm not going to do that. We could uh, let you have the slide deck, Mariki, if there's somebody requiring it. Um, it covers the MBA, the PG, the BMA, and then the MDEF. I can quickly go through that if you want. Um, there we see our second stream that I talked about. Also three levels, and the MDEF is the one that we started off with in the year 2003. So we're well established. We were the first business school on this continent to offer the Masters in Development Finance. Oh, PhD. Okay. And she wants the Development Finance. Okay, let's, let's continue with the Development Finance very quickly. Um, I'm going to skip this slide. Um, just show the stream again. We also have an advanced certificate in development finance um, at, at USB Ed. And then we start with the postgraduate diploma, and then we go to the M4, which is the master's level, and then we go to the PhD. So similar entrance requirements, always uh, four years of study for the M degree, uh, honors or PhD. Of course, we, we'd like students to have a background in business finance or economics or accounting, 
uh, or commas. Uh, quantitative analysis is what you will do on this program. Um, I always say that I've seen these spreadsheets that they work with, Doris. <laughs> so they work with lots of data which they analyze in the program. The curriculum, just to show you the type of modules that they do to give everybody an idea, economics development, perspectives in Africa, issues in banking and finance, microfinance is becoming very important. Yeah. Project finance, of course, because we have these big infrastructure projects, of course, yeah, on the continent. People know, would like to know how to manage that, governance and ethics, and then research methods in MDEF. The assignment is also uh, similar to the MBA assignment. I think it's a little bit bigger. And you go work on the assignment while you do the coursework. They do a step-by-step -step approach in, in the MDEF. And there you can see the elective courses. The focus is on Sub-Saharan Africa. I know that was the focus from the beginning. So uh, our students come from all across yeah, the continent and they get a full continent view of policy and all of those things, real world practice. But I heard from out, I just want to jump in there, that, that real, a lot of learning happens between the students yes, as well. Yes, exactly. Because Africa is so diverse and the students come from everywhere. The South African students learn about policy in Nigeria and Uganda and Ghana Absolutely. and wherever. So a lot of you learn a lot in the program, but you yes. also learn. It's probably the same for all the other for all the other programs as well. But here we have the diversity in terms of Africa and students. especially policy, policy, and finance policy stuff. Yes, how to evaluate policy and how to write policy. Yeah, how to Both write of them. policy briefs and Absolutely. Country. Emphasis is strongly on that, you're right. We also require six weeks on campus, a little bit different from the MBA. Students come for two weeks, while on the MBA, they come for a week or six, eight days at a time. So these students, they, they uh, come for a longer period um, in, their, in their degree. So policy, policy, we've covered that already. To so review and evaluate policy, develop and implement policy. So that is the, the focus of the program. And then also to evaluate and formulate programs to address these development finance needs, um, how to manage that. So that is the focus. Then our students, as you see, Doris, come from all over. Oh, Ian is saying, you speak of development in Africa, there are many interesting things that happening was why in I was South Africa. Just now, yeah. It's hopefully heading towards a hopefully, bottom. Ian, hopefully, Ian, we'll be <laughs> learning <laughs> lessons from Mauritius because yes. you guys got it right so well. Yes. Um, but the question there is, who's the in, in development finance aimed at? I think it's people that are interested in influencing policy. Yes. I think that's... We focus. get a lot of people, Ian, from development agencies. Like uh, we have in South Africa uh, a number of uh, the Development Bank, for instance, of Southern Africa. Um, then we have the Development Corporation. Yeah. Then we have all the major banks now have development finance sections or the uh, divisions. And we attract students from there, um, more and more from banks. Yeah, and from government um, bodies. Definitely, governments as well. But we see a growth in the banks yeah. sending, their, sending their students. So there we see it's only three blocks that you would be required to come here. But they are two weeks long over the two-year uh, period. The development finance PG DIP is similar to the one that you offer and to our own, uh, but you, you need that to go into the masters. So the modules is also around an entrance to finance and development, financial analysis and project appraisal, 
And then this is the important one, small-scale enterprise development and finance. A lot of emphasis on the PG dip on this one. Risk management and then private, public-private partnerships. Those That's are such becoming so important. Modules. Now that yes. I see them for the first time, I think, yeah, oh, this is cool stuff. It is. It's so they start cool. with that on the PG dip mm -hmm. and then continue on the M. And that is really all from my side. I I rushed it a bit, I know, but while we don't have many people out there uh, interested in the development finance, but for Mariki and the Nazera sake, um, uh, we did cover that, I think, in a sense. Mariki had still had a question on the PhD. Would that be the PhD following the MBA is what I'm guessing now? Okay. Um, so the, we, the good news is we now have rolling applications. No. That, that, that we yes. don't have only take applications no, once it's a year rolling or applications on PhD. Usually, people from our own MBA, from other masters, sometimes mm -hmm. in, in exceptional circumstances, and then MBAs from other universities as well. So, it will depend on your background and what you're heading for. Mm -hmm. And it's a variety of topics that I can say. Yeah, because we have a di diverse faculty. We have a diverse so faculty. That can be the, the I, at the moment, I have one PhD student working on the reputation management. And then you have people working on uh, financial planning, uh, PhD. We have students working on corporate finance and in between, and leadership. Well, in future studies, we had an interesting doctorate last year finishing on the future of war. Uh -huh. Isn't that a good topic? The future of war is an excellent topic. It's an excellent topic. What we will be doing for war going forward. <laughs> it was a little bit scary to read as well. I, I can imagine those. I think, so I think on your side, is any, <laughs> anything is possible. Anything is possible. Okay, yeah. cool. I think that's sort of wrapping it up. I, I do think I so. hope we're I... going to see a lot of students from Mauritius coming up. I Thanks, Mariki, for organizing all of this. It's always good to do business with you and with Global Natives, our partner in Mauritius. We like them. Want to do a if PhD? You have, to, already you have to have an idea, Mariki, of a broad topic. I would say a theme. Mm -hmm. And then you work with a, 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 a supervisor just carrying you through to the proposal stage. Mm -hmm. And at proposal stage, you will, would have narrowed it down to a more specific topic, um, and then you go ahead. Yeah. So you need to have a broad theme, an idea of the area that you'd like to do the PhD in, although not a specific topic at the right in the beginning. Yeah, there is some guidance and hand-holding. If you pick up your hand and say, you know what, I think, I want to think about yeah. this, start the communication. Yes, we have a, a PhD head. The head of the PhD is Laura uh, Skelly. She will then allocate the student to me or to somebody else on the faculty, and they will then prepare the student for proposal. So uh, the, MD, the PhD head will take the lead in evaluating the area of research. I that noticed that at some other places you must come and apply with your complete proposal. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that, that is much better here. Yeah. You, you could just sort of say, I think I want to think about this, so that they could just know who to sort of guide you to. Exactly. And then there is a lot of guidance in assisting you to actually prepare the proposal. Absolutely. Um, which makes yes. it safer. And it's much it more streamlined than before streamlined. and at other places. I think we okay. have a good process now Deep. in place. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much, Ian, Mariki, Nazira, and the people here. Doris, thank you very much. It yeah, was a very... I really enjoyed yes. talking. Me too. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you and goodbye.